Gamers, been doing some runs of Onslaught, and I think I found probably the easiest loadout I used on my Hunter to make this easy. I'm talking level 50, you should run through this on Legend, no problem, by simply just using this build. Now, there's different variants of this build. You don't have to run the Orpheus Rig Hunter. You can use your Falcon, but I just realized that I didn't have enough time to rip the tether with Orpheus Rigs and then putting on your Falcon and taking advantage of that exotic because I'm getting my super back so quickly. There's small tips that you can use with this. I'm telling you right now, it's just shooting your gun. You get so much energy from your super with the Orpheus Rigs, but simply using your primary, doing damage to yellow bars, shooting them probably, you know, nine, 10 times, waiting for them to explode with using incandescent like I'm using with my Zalo's Bane and just making that super energy stack up. All I do is rip a tether, shoot a Galahorn, finish them off with a primary. Standing in a well, I'm grabbing those orbs for my teammates. And by the time the next wave spawns, I have that super back. I want to show you here how I simply trapped enemies in this corner by myself. Using a subsistence commemoration, I simply just ran over these ads, kept tethering them, clearing all the ads, tether after tether after tether. It was really simple, but then I realized Man, Gallahorn's probably gonna do more work because we're probably having a Cenotaph Warlock in the fire team. I would recommend having that as well because being able to use unlimited amounts of Gallahorn to get that super back, also using my primary. I don't know if you guys noticed, but when you use your primary on enemies, you do get your super back way faster. So I kinda wanna break this build down, show you what mods I'm using and why. So let's get into it. I think if you're running with a Warlock, the Cenotaph should have on a Trace Rifle and a regular Rocket Launcher because the Warlock's probably gonna be using Sunshot and a Legendary Rocket Launcher. Hunter. bipod would be better for more rockets so the hunter is going to be running the gallahorn i got zealous bane for incandescent and also taking advantage of the artifact these are the artifact mods that i was running just taking advantage of being able to become radiant just with my solar weapon and cause explosions with that incandescent and artifact mod going into the super we're just using deadfall with vortex grenades snare bomb ambush dodge you know the basics finishing step and trapper's ambush to go invis a lot to get those objectives for your teammates like you know the brigs or taking advantage of the mines you using that invis if you're going to use your falcon you should use stylus executioner so you can keep going invis uh, the fragments are up to you but the base ones i was using was obscurity to go invis on finishers cessation to cause finishers to make them volatile to create that void breach because i'm going to be using starvation to pick up void breaches from those finishers and creating orbs to get devour persistence to make invisibility and devour last longer i just want to point out cessation you can take off if you want and use harvest again these are just base loadouts that you can use and you can tweak it yourself going into the mods uh since i did run with cenotaph i did heavy ammo scout with heavy ammo finder so that my teammate could get heavy just in case if i made some running a solar loader just because i like reloading my zealous vein a little quicker it's a little slow momentum transfer and bolstering detonation to play into my invis i only run one void resistance because i want solar reserves for my galahorn but you can also swap your chest piece when you see a brick in activity running the solar weapon surge got to run the solar scab for the galley and then the double bomber with powerful attraction I'm going to show you guys some gameplay loop of me using this build and kind of explaining what to do. In the Onslaught, I really don't spend points anymore until after level 30. That way I can pretty much buy all gold for turrets and decoys. I feel like the turrets and the decoys are probably your most powerful in your arsenal. So I'm going to show you guys some gameplay with some commentary of how I use this build and hopefully it helps you with your runs and get that sweet loot. All right, so why are we using this? Well, right now we want to focus on ad clear and getting our super back. And what we're gonna be doing here is paying attention to primary usage. I wanna use all my primary, rock that incandescent, make explosions, get that super back like this. This is where you wanna use that primary. If stuff's tethered, you just wanna use your primary. I mean, just getting that tether back just like that for every single round is definitely the most important thing. This is a speed wave. Same thing here, pay attention to the tether, let the enemies get tethered, let the enemies get tethered, and then all I gotta do is use that primary, get my super back, pretty much let them know that, hey, just mark the enemies and let me, let me use my primary. And just like that, we're back at it. Xenotaph marks everything so we're not nuking. No, I, I, I honestly, watch out. I honestly would switch exotics, but I just don't have time. It's an ogre. Big ogre, yeah. One person come with me. The other, Lana, can you pop the well and well. stay here? I have my well now. Okay. We gotta hurry, so. 
the reason why I, I took VC with me there is just because we want to. That's like killing the brig. You want to make sure that that guy's dead immediately. I could have went there by myself and tethered and just shot the rocket, but what if I threw? Like, what if something goes wrong? So we're kind of changing the outcome there, just making sure that that doesn't go wrong. If Lana said help, I could have rounded the corner and tethered just to help her out. But this is why we use Cenotaf. Do you see all this ammo? I can actually tether the ground right here and make that shrieker turn off. It's kind of funny. See how that shrieker's turned off? <laughs> uh, watch out for the shrieker above your head. As soon as that shrieker comes back on, we no. are going to blast it. No. Pulls out. Save him. So at 36, you definitely want to stay together. Um, you know, us using rockets, we could separate, but He's had start to hurt, but we're going back in. What's nice is, is we have all our scraps still. We have golds in the section we're in. Uh, right in front of us. To the left. And right here. And then the uh, hunter's always gonna grab this spark because I can just go invis and run past everything. Thank you, Luna. All right. Still got juiced rockets. Yep. Here we go. There's a crate outside, I think. There's a crate. So we're gonna pull this crate because we can get another one. Waiting for a Tormentor or Demolitionist, just in case that we got the oh shit spot up there. We're gonna say, we got our golds here. We're gonna prepare our scrap for the final section where we'll be going from level 40 to 50 and we'll be able to level up everything again. I recommend doing the decoys. The decoys on the turrets are huge. Shax is pretty crazy, the, the attention that he gets. Uh, let these guys get tethered. This is gonna be a free round. The reason why I know it's gonna be a free round is just because of the ads coming out. I know that it's Witches and Thrall. This is kind of like a big chill run, but I want to make sure that I get the kills here because I want to get my tether back just in case if this round goes really, really quick. As you see, it's almost done. I got my tether back. We take our time here on these on these bombs, so I'm gonna go get I'm gonna go get B right now. You guys can pop a well. I don't have one. BC. Now I come back, check on everything, and now I'm gonna go safely go get this one. Prepare for boss wave. So what's nice is, is I could always come back to this section and pick up any heavy for the next round if I need it. But, uh, you know, we have plenty of points to go from level 40 to level 50. So we'll rock at this boss and then we'll uh, Thunderlord the last one. Here we go. Uh, first well. Two. Oh, good choice. Oh. So this guy uh, has a little, a little problem. He doesn't have any health, so. Poor guy. Poor guy. What a great boss. Now we're great. setting up for the 40 to 50 arsenal. Got 25, okay. Oh, here we go. Happy corner. Happy corner. We're waiting to spend it. Corner. I fully juiced this turret. Get Shaq's daddy up there. And then remember, there's a turret back here too. So I don't really like activating that stuff because there's really no need for it. It's this stuff to protect the battery. So we have a turret here, we got a turret here, we got a turret left. All right, this is gonna be a tether moment. I'm gonna wall. I'm gonna let him get tethered. I'm gonna pay attention to the right here. You guys can work on the left. Just let me get all these kills. Showcasing how I get my super back so quickly. Just focus on the left, focus on that left.
I don't have wall. You don't have wall? No. Wall. Trying to see where the enemies are going to come from. They're behind, they're behind. Uh, I'm not there with you. I'm getting the bonus. I got him. I don't know what angle they're coming from. I think they're teleporting. Need a tether? Oh, we're almost done. Uh, I don't use power. Sky bombers. It's normal ones. I don't. I don't use the uh, power for preservation. I'll explain why. Getting cooked. And that's it, man. We're on our way to 50 boss fight. GG. For the, for the reason why I don't use power preservation, I was going to put it on. I think it's more important for me to run heavy ammo finder and heavy ammo scout for the Cenotaph Warlock because the more heavy you spam, the more easier this is. Um, yes, we do get ammo crate bonuses, but I really just don't need... I don't really have struggles of getting my super back. Now, if your supers are different in the fire team and you need people to get their supers quicker, yeah, you'd run this. But here we go. Divinity Double Thunderlord. Bang, bang. But uh, that's probably one of the uh, easiest level 50 runs you've seen. Just because we use tether trap the ads, shoot them with your primary, and uh, that's it. I mean, I, I literally encourage to use primaries because that's what gets you your super back. Same thing works for well. If you have a well, you get primary kills, you're gonna get your shit back quicker. Here we go, though. Pay attention to the super energy, ladies and gentlemen. Upper right here to the right. A div on. Oh, look, I, I'm about to have my super back. Um, I made a mistake. What? I didn't. You didn't put on div? No. You didn't? No. Okay, we knew that Lana was gonna throw, so we're gonna um, we're gonna put that in the video that uh, she threw. <laughs> oh. <laughs> name it works out. <laughs> Last? Oh, your place, Warlock. No, don't put me on div duty. Senior Staff Warlock had the Apentis on. Uh, I think it's very important. Obviously, you've seen through the run that I was using my primary a lot. I think Sunshots are really good for this, simply because explosions and Salo's Bane was causing Scorch for me to get my super back nonstop. Sunshots huge, and then uh, Apex Predator. You can use the Reconstruction Bipod or Reconstruction Bait and Switch. Personally, I would run Bipod so you can just spam rockets. And then we got the Cenotaph set up. And then VC, we was running uh, the same setup, but with just Riptide for Chill Clip. And he has on the Phoenix Protocol well build that I posted in the other video. And then obviously, I just uh, use my stuff for Scorch. Galley. I don't know, man. I think Galley's, Galley's the play. If you got a Cenotaph Warlock, hopefully you guys uh, make it run smooth like that. Trap with tethers, call it a day. If you don't have this set up in your fire team, that's okay. You can obviously try different stuff. But I just wanted to give you guys a base build on what to go off of.